Hello and welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss non-enzymatic proteins. So we know that proteins have multiple functions besides acting as enzymes. They can also act as structural proteins. So there are a lot of structural proteins which we'll be discussing: actin, myosin, kinesin, and dynein. Actin and myosin, the cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix, are composed of five primary proteins. actin tubulin part of cytoskeleton collagen elastin and keratin they make up the extracellular matrix actin is the most abundant protein in eukaryotic cells and it assembles into long polymers known as microfilaments microfilaments have two ends positive and negative the positive end and the negative end the negative end is for dissociation and positive end is for Association or polymerization. The association and dissociation of actin monomers is regulated by adenosine triphosphate, that is ATP. So when ATP is bound to actin, the actin monomer will attach to the polymer. As the ATP is hydrolyzed into adenosine diphosphate (ADP), the actin monomer will detach, and the constant cycle of attaching and detaching is known as treadmilling. Actin plays an important role in muscle movement along with a motor protein called myosin. So the cross bridge cycle is the heads of the myosin interact with actin filaments in a cross bridge cycle to pull actin close together and shorten the sarcomere causing a muscle contraction. Sarcomere is the functional unit of muscle tissue. Next we have microtubule. The tubulins are the monomer of microtubule. the insides of microtubules are hollow and tubulin monomers associate into heterodimers of alpha tubulin and beta tubulin alpha tubulin is exposed at the negative ends of microtubules and beta tubulin is exposed at the positive ends of microtubules next structure is collagen it is a helical fiber made of three interwoven strands and composes a large portion of the extracellular matrix and connective tissue Collagen provides structure to our tissues, bones, ligaments and tendons. Elastins these fibers allow our tissues to stretch and snap back into shape without permanent structural damage. Keratin is localized in epithelial cells and it provides cells with the necessary structure and stability to protect our bodies and acts as a hard barrier from the outside world. for example hair fingernails horns etc kinesins and dynins are also known as molecular transporters so they are motor proteins and these proteins move in the cell by hydrolyzing atp microtubules are highway for motor proteins microtubules as highway and kinesin and dynin travel towards the opposite ends so kinesins travel towards the positive end of microtubule and dynins they travel towards the negative end of microtubule this is the negative end end and this is the positive end and the microtubule on the microtubule uh, both dynin and kinesin carrying the vesicles they are traveling towards the opposite ends proteins can also act as receptors gpcrs g protein coupled receptors also known as seven pass transmembrane domain receptors this is the structure of a g protein it's a transmembrane structure and spans through the membrane it has a serpentine structure because it passes through the membrane seven times it it is a heterotrimer so in its inactive form it has three subunits alpha beta and gamma which are bound to gdp in order to become active the beta and gamma subunits they go away and only g alpha is left with gtp once it gets activated the secondary messengers cyclic amp and cyclic gmp they also get activated cmp or cyclic amp is the most abundant secondary messenger so g alpha beta gamma in its inactive form is bound to gdp with the exchange of gdp with gtp G alpha becomes active and activates the enzyme adenylate cyclase. 
This enzyme converts ATP to CAMP and the secondary messenger activation takes place. In turn, cyclic AMP then activates downstream protein kinases which can then undergo a lot of metabolic reactions. Next type of receptors, we have ionotropic receptors. They can either be ligand gated or voltage gated. So now ligand gated ion channels, they are a group of transmembrane ion channel proteins which open to allow ions such as sodium, potassium, calcium, chlorine to pass through the membrane in response to the binding of a chemical messenger. Active transport in which substances move against the concentration gradient using ATP and transporters is usually it's used for molecules when we need to transport them against the concentration gradient that is we are trying to move uh, some you know moving from lower to higher concentration even if molecules are moving from higher to lower concentration that is big large molecules and charged molecules they cannot pass through the membrane unaided because it, this is the property of the plasma membrane that it won't allow transport of large molecules and charged molecules across the plasma membrane so now uh, for example glucose sodium calcium potassium chlorine they are charged and large molecules so on the basis of transport uh, the, they are classified as uniport symport or antiport now uh, uniport means movement of a single molecule in one direction when a single molecule moves across the membrane Antiport is movement of two molecules using same ATPase in opposite directions. Just like sodium potassium pump. In symport, movement of two molecules using same ATPase in same direction. So only one ATPase is used in this. Now plasma membrane is made up of lipids, proteins and glycoconjugates. There is a uh, lipid bilayer and in which the proteins they float. They have different properties. They can be integral, they can be peripheral. So, the preferred substrate of the plasma membrane is non-polar hydrophobic molecules, which are small in size and they are uncharged. Next, we have voltage-gated channels. For example, sodium channel. They open and close in response to the voltage across the membrane. Ligand gated channels, they open and close in response to the binding of a ligand molecule such as a neurotransmitter. So this is ligand based. Also voltage gated ion channels are transmembrane proteins and they open up as a response to the voltage difference across the cell membrane. Now when the electrical potential is present near the voltage gated channel, it changes the conformation of the channel protein and it opens up the channel across the membrane and the ions enter or exit through the passage and mostly they are located in the neuron uh, neurons in the nervous system and they are very ion specific channels for example sodium channels are there potassium channels calcium channels and these are few examples of voltage gated ion channels Next type of channels we have ligand gated. The ligand is a small chemical molecule that it interacts with the receptors of the channel proteins. They are specific type of stimulating molecules and once the ligand binds with the receptor it will change the shape or the conformation of the channel protein accordingly. Next we have signaling proteins. So cell to cell signaling means the transfer of information from one cell to another and it is also known as intercellular communication. Now this type of communication process happens through uh, some chemicals known as chemical messengers. In cell signaling molecules, uh, usually a hormone is a chemical messenger that is produced by the endocrine glands and delivered by the blood to the organs or tissues which are the sites of action. For example, insulin, growth hormone. Now, chemical messengers known as paracrine messengers, they grow, they go through the interstitial fluid, uh, like from control cells to target cells. And there are three types we have discussed in our previous videos also: paracrine, autocrine, and endocrine. 
the messengers which are known as autocrine they regulate the source cells that produce them uh, you know they are produced on the same cells and they act on the same cell therefore another name of these messengers is intercellular chemical mediators neurotransmitters and neurohormones they are responsible for transmitting information from one nerve cell to another and then we have peptide hormones they are hormones whose molecules are peptide in nature they have shorter amino acid chain lengths than protein hormones just like amino hormones are there peptide hormones protein hormones steroid hormones there are a lot of examples like insulin glucagon leptin oxytocin prolactin so when a peptide hormone binds to a receptor on the surface of a cell a secondary messenger appears in the cytoplasm and it triggers signal transduction leading to the cellular responses antibodies they are also protein in nature they are examples of quaternary structure just like immunoglobulin you can see here this is a quaternary structure with two heavy chains and two light chains this is a peritope and an epitope which represent the sites of antigen antibody binding the examples of antibodies are they are also called immunoglobulins because uh, they are globular in shape iga igg igm ige and igd the antibodies their functions include neutralization in which neutralizing antibodies block parts of the surface of a bacterial cell agglutination in which antibodies glue together foreign cells into clumps that are attractive uh, targets for phagocytosis and the third function is precipitation where antigens are pro uh, forced to precipitate out of solution in clumps that are attractive targets for phagocytosis again that is eating up of cells and thanks for watching stay tuned subscribe to my channel